Okay, here we are. We've got the pressure switch here. Problem is the pump is not running. The first thing we we're going to do, we're going to take our amp meter. We're going to clip it around just one of the lead wires. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's not pulling any amperage right now. So the second thing we're going to do is we're going to get our electric meter. We're going to test all four leads going to the pressure switch itself. We have power coming in. You have to test on all four points because if the points and the contacts are not making contact, which you see the contacts right, right there, those are contacts and then those are contacts and these seem okay normal if a normal pump would be running normally when they close they would arc so we get no arc we get no amp draw it's not pulling but well meter said something but should be pulling around six so now we're going to go out to the well okay now we're here at the well these are uh this is your wire coming in this is your wire going down into the well the reason we're testing our wire nuts, and you can tell we have 248 volts, so we've got good voltage. The reason we test the voltage here is to make sure that there's not a break in the ground from here to the house. If there was a break in the ground from here to the house, you would not get 240 volts. So you don't want to come out here and turn the power off and pull your pump out. Your pump still be good if you didn't test the leads of your wire nuts to make sure that you're actually getting power out here. So we know that there's no amp draw inside. We know that there's power being sent out here. So we know that the problem is down in the hole. So we're gonna pull the pump and see what we find. Back to the well. Here we have is, this is your top of your pump here with your well seal and pumps down in the bottom so what we're about to do is about to pull lift up here we're going to drag our black roll pipe across this device that we made here it's got two wheelbarrow wheels uh, right now since the casing is so low to the ground this would normally hook onto the side of the casing but since it's so low it's not hooking so what we do we improvise with a ratchet strap ratcheted it to the casing and we're going to stop here and we're gonna pull this out, roll it right down, and roll it right across the yard. Okay, so we just finished pulling the uh, the pump out of the ground, and first thing I noticed is it's about 80 feet long, and the second thing is the number one thing about putting in pumps. This wire was not taped at all. Um, normally when you find a pump and you pull it out, you need to have about two to three feet uh, between every spot you tape with only black electrical tape. Do not use uh, duct tape. It is made of cloth and when you mix it with water over time it will deteriorate and fall apart fall down in your well get sucked to the intake of the pump all sorts of crazy things so uh i'm going to turn the camera around and i'm going to let you all uh see what i found so we're going to start here at the well seal as you can tell this is the cable here nothing was taped we've got about 80 feet normally i would check this walking all the way up at every foot but I've already walked up and I don't know where to look. So we've got this section right here. And first thing I noticed is boom, there was a repair from the past. And as you can tell, you can see that green corrosion. You know that there was bare copper wire showing right there. The second thing I'd like to emphasize is this is uh, this is gray. This is just regular wire you would put inside the wall of your house going to a panel box. This is not submersible pump cable. This is not a wire. This is not a water uh, a water type wire. It can be used. People have used it many a times, but this is not the proper type of wire to install in a wet location like this. There I feel there is some uh, there's some chafing right here. I don't know if you can tell. You can tell it's kind of a lighter gray. And then if you see right here, this is probably the the large issue. This is 
your black wire so it has worn through the outer jacket of it the green what you are seeing is the oxidation of your ground wire so that might not be you know the, the legitimate issue it could be we just, we just don't know we just know that the pump is not running come down here and we see that there is more see that green there there's more of an issue there so I'm gonna say that that right there could be the problem come over here we see a little bit of a little bit of chafing on the green wire all this is the incorrect way to bundle this up with tape when I uh, install it and reinstall it all this needs to be flat and flush another thing is this pump had the wire guard taken off there's a plastic guard that goes on the outside of the pump supposed to and if it is taken off due to any reason it needs to have tape wrapped around this whole canister here to where all this wire just doesn't sit here and and flop out so we're going to uh cut it loose test the pump see if the pump still feels good and uh we're going to rewire it up with the correct wire and tape it up correctly we've got going here we've got the old well pump there and we got the homeowner he's about to turn it on to see if it's even good we need around a 6.0 okay he has turned the power on and nothing has happened to the well pump so what that tells me is there's an open winding inside the pump that is not allowing it to run so that pump is no good okay, the next thing I'm going to talk to you about is our wire splices these are what we call stakons that connect your your uh, your yellow pump wire, submersible pump cable, to the cable that uh, is connected to the pump. This right here, right here, is uh, 3M rubber tape. Very good stuff. Uh, this blue is just a protective coating that's on it. Uh, you peel, and you see right here, you peel that off. You will have this uh, this dark rubbery substance on both sides. It is not a tacky tape, very very slightly, but what it does, uh, it adheres only to itself. So if you were to take this piece here and stick it to that, it is now stuck. It's stuck very very well. You can't really get it off. Um, you got to peel it off, kind of. But what that does, that is a uh, that, that is a waterproof sealant. You can also use epoxy lined heat shrink tubing bought at any local hardware store. The heat shrinks, they're great, um, but this is quick, this is easy, and you can get, you know, a whole roll of it, so. Okay, we're back here with pump. We have taped it all the way up thoroughly. I'll start with the pump and explain what I did here. Now, you have the wire guard right here, which your wires come up. You want to make sure your wires lay as flat as possible. If you can tell, I've laid them all the way flat candy caning all the way up all the way up flat no twists no bulges until right here where I have my splice underneath continuing with my yellow wire flat now I take my wire about every one one eight one foot eighteen inches right above the pump and then I slowly go up to about every two to three feet another thing is when you connect this to this pump fitting here you have your two clamps you want to make sure the head of your clamps and the band of your clamps are on the opposite side of your wire if these heads were on this side and your wire went over them over time it would eventually the sharp parts of these uh, clamps will wear through your wire so that's one thing you want to remember um, then you go all the way up it's taped all the way up all the way around every two to three feet all the way to the tip top of the well seal now the well seal as some of you do on, do not know uh, this is a an older metal steel well seal uh, it is a two-piece well seal with uh, a rubber grommet in between um, some might think that to get it out of and off of the well that you have to undo these bolts here do not ever I repeat undo these bolts you can loosen them if it is tough but loosening these will cause this bolt to drop down in the well and if you loosen both of them what will happen is this piece here is one piece and this piece here is one piece so if you 
if this rope wasn't here and you undid these, this metal ring here will fall down the hole and sometimes can lodge in between the pump and the outside of the, the well and your pump will kind of get locked in the well and you'll never get it out. So never take these bolts off. You can loosen them. What that'll do, uh, tightening the bolts swedges out this uh, this rubber uh, just in case you know it were jumping or something like that. But in this case, it's such an old one that it's uh, it's so such a tight fit that you don't need to tighten it, and you can't tighten these. These are just way too old. So uh, for anybody who's wondered, never take the bolts off. You can loosen them. Never take them off. All right, we're down here back where the pressure tank is. Homeowner's about to turn the power on just to check the new pump. There we go. You saw the start amps come up, running right at six and a half, running beautifully. The pressure's slowly coming up. You can hear the water rushing in through the pipes. As the pressure slowly increases, your amperage will slowly increase due to the, uh, you know, the tolerances inside the pump, having to press, pressurize, you know, all that, and it puts more of a load on the, uh, on the electric motor. That way, the, mo the electric motor is then going to pull a higher amperage because it's having to work harder. This switch, you can look there and see where it says on 40, off 60, it means it's a 40-60 pressure switch, which means that this right here needs to be 2 psi below whatever it cuts on. It cuts on at 40, so it needs to be around 38. And that was set at 36, so we know that that is good. Now you can only, it should click off here in a second. Ooh, look at that, going up to 70. I'm going to say somebody has crunked down on that switch. Yeah. And one way, if you, anybody ever wants to give themselves more juice, you can always take this right here, that nut, and turn that nut down. And as you slowly turn that nut down, it'll slowly increase the pressure on that spring. And that spring is what determines how much pressure you're going to have in your water. So if you want to increase your water pressure, you just turn that nut down. Uh, not a lot, uh, maybe maybe four or five turns, uh, four or five threads, and you'll gain, you know, five or six, seven PSI. But uh, you don't want to go too much because the plumbing in this house is old Quest pipe. The old Quest pipe's good for 100 PSI, so we don't want to uh, we don't want to limit it too much. But uh, it's pumped up, it's kicked off. Uh, toilets in the house are running good, so uh, everything is back to work in order.